We started the Mishnah on Testament days. Name a psychic and a shma bishachis. What time can one recite Shakriya Shema in the morning? Mishiachim and Chelas Eleven, and you can tell the difference between blue and white. Rabbi Eliezer Eimer, in Chilis Lakarti, between blue and green. Whoa, that's much worse. We'll see. Color of the leak. Leak. Then there's a question if this word is in there. It says, Adonai Tzachamah, Adonai Tzachamah. The final time that you have to recite the Shema is, is sunrise. Rabbi Shua Eimer, Adshali Shais. Rabbi Shua says, no, you have three hours into the day. Why? Three hours into the day, the, that's the the machlekes is when the day starts. It's three hours from the from the uh, derech malachim lamed v'shalish shoyis, because that's what time the princes wake up, and the word that we're using to know what time time for reciting the shema is is when you wake up, and since. Um, Jewish people would be considered princes, so they wake up until three hours into the day. That's the time, that's the latest time for Shema. Someone reads from, from then and on after the three hours, so it's not, it's not a problem. It's, uh, he doesn't lose out. It's called the Matera Batera. So it's as if he read from the Torah. So he doesn't have the, the um, time for reciting the Shema, but it's as if he read from the Torah. Obviously, it's as if he read from the Torah. I mean, he read the final section of the Torah. Maybe it means that he's allowed to say it by heart. Or it's, it's, it's some, it's, it's Didn't we learn yesterday that you could, under, you know, we slept late, we drunk, that you could say the Shema from the night before during the same time period? Right. So technically, someone can say two Shemas in this time period, you have to say both? Yeah. We didn't actually say that, but Tesis mentioned. We the didn't say that, but Tesis said that that Chayyad actually worked as well. My Bain Chaylas, the Gemara now asks, My Bain Chaylas the Lava. What does it mean when it says between blue and white? Elena Bain Gavava Dimra Chivala Gavava Dimra Chitzchelta. If we say it means wool, a pile of white wool and a pile of blue wool. But the Laila Nami made the other. That you can see even at night. How do you see it at night if there's no light? I guess from the light of the moon. That sort of light is enough to see the difference between white and, uh, and blue. Rather, we're dealing with one pile of wool and you dyed it. You put it, you put, put the, added the color to it. But it, not all of the color took to, not all the wool took to the color. So there's different shades in there. It's a, Part that didn't absorb the color, so that you can't really see so well because it's, it's a smaller amount. It's not like my, a blue shirt and a white shirt, or a, a you know a blue pile of wool and a white pile of wool. Here it's in the wool itself. There could be one section that didn't get it. That's how Rashi learns this. Tesis on the top. Tesis Ella quotes a Gemara Menachas that says. If you look at the tzitzis and you see another mitzvah that this, that's dependent on it, what reason I say, you look at it, what mitzvah is dependent on it, it's dependent on the tzitzis, it's Krishna. <coughs> because when you see, you can't recite Shema until you can recognize the difference between the chelach and the lavan of the tzitzis. Tzitzis says, what Rashi is translating this, that it's a wool that got dyed and uh, it can absorb totally. He says, from the Gemara over there, it seems like it's the wool and the white, it's the blue and the white of the tzitzis. Tanya is taught in a brisa. Reb Meir, Reimer, Reb Meir says, Mishiach being Zev, Zev lekelev. And you can tell the difference between a wolf and a dog. Reb Kiva, Reb Ben Chamar Laroi. Reb Kiva says, when you can tell the difference between something, between a donkey and a wild donkey. It's not so easy. It's a I know, I <laughs> well, dogs are from the wolf family, I assume. I assume. Yeah. If I, if I bought yeah, my that I don't know anything about. German Shepherd uh, right. and the wolf? What's the Hasidism? I don't know. 
I don't know. This, uh, that's uh, temporary. The Bikiva says between a donkey and a wild donkey. Others say, When you can see a friend that's four cubits away and you recognize him, that's a, the, we're discussing here the amount of light in the day. That's like how, how, how much the sun has come up. The sun hasn't come up yet, but ha, ha, the, the, the darkness has risen. The light of the sun is coming over the horizon, and you're able to already see certain things. Rafuna says the halacha is like a cherem, and a cherem said that when you see your friend four cubits away, <coughs> saying like not as a friend, like but like just somebody that's not like God. Like, God so Taisus over here says uh, he quotes you Shalmi. He says if it's someone that you know very well, then you can recognize him even from a distance. You just the form, you can already tell who it is. If it's someone that you don't know at all, so. That's going to be much later in the day. Um, so he says, rather, it's talking about a type of person that comes once in a while, like a Mishilla, comes once a year or something. I don't know, a guest that comes. And that, you can recognize him from four cubits away. So that would be a, uh, um, oh, the, the amount of time. Yeah. Four cubits or four amas? Four cubits, four amas, four cubits. Why yeah. should, what's yeah. that? That's what I'm translating it as. I don't know. Um, it's a very interesting point, Taisa says at the end of Acherim. He says that Reb Meir is usually called Acherim. And here we have Reb Meir saying one opinion and then Acherim saying something else. So he says, it, it can't be, uh, this Acherim can't be Reb Meir because we already have Reb Meir. Okay, that's all he says. Last night I was at a Lachayim and uh, there was a guy sitting next to me. He does a dot. He says, Did you see Rabbeinu Peretz on the dot? I said, No. He says, He has a new Gemara. And over there, there's Rabbeinu Peretz. You can see this Gemara. And um, he said that Rabbeinu Peretz says that Achirim, if there's Rabbeinu in there, then Achirim means Alicia ben Abuya. That was very interesting. Do you have that? Well, Achir. Yeah, here we have. In this Gemara, this, this is a new Gemara. Do you have it there, Rafa? The Elif and Acher? I have, but this is written in Paris, nice of Ella Mishmei the Acher, Elisha Ben Avuya, comma, by Sefer. You switched it. So, um, so why, why is it Rameh old first is, is Acher? Okay. Why do we say that? Yeah, that has to do with the story when they try to get rid of um, Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel from being the Nasi. Uh, Rav Meir and um, someone just texted you to Zoom once I need number to get in. Let me see what I can do. Let me see. Let me see what the ID number to get into the Zoom. Let me see what I can do. One second. Let's do invite. Oh, that's David Lyons. Of course he's going to ask. Okay, one second. It worked for me. I'm on. Let's do this. Sorry, everyone. Uh, okay, I, I hope that works. I don't know what else, what to do after that. Okay. That it works. Okay. I don't know if they changed. No, it. I, I, mean, I just the thing again. The yeah. thing. Is it is it working? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, well, I'm just telling you about uh, yeah, Rameir and Achirim. Yeah, they yeah. wanted um, the Shem Ben Gamliel told the yeshiva to stand up differently for right. Rameir than than the than the Nassim, the way they stand up for Rav Shem Ben Gamliel himself. So the Mayor and the Nassim tested. Uh, they were going to test Rav Shem Ben Gamliel the following day on the subject that he doesn't know well. That way, they would embarrass him, or they would say that you can't be the Nassim anymore. So he ended up learning the whole the night, but because of that, Rebbe, the Shimming Mil's son, changed the name of Rebbe to Acherim. Not Rebbe. When they, they changed it, and then when Rebbe sometimes puts it in the Mishnah as well. Like this, I would have okay. said right away that this is a Brysa. This is not a Mishnah. Maybe Acherim in the Brysa, but apparently it's not. Uh, okay. Amar Abaya. Abaya says, Litfilin ka'acherim. For tfilin, we go like a'acherim. 
it says that when you can recognize your friend from four cubits away, that's the time to fill it. The two come up to the seat. Krishna, he said in the field, I'd like to do like the pious ones, which is, as we're going to see in a moment, that's at the time of sunrise. Shama Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan says, we're seeking. So, some, they have the, 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 the of sunrise. They, they plan it out that the reciting of the Shema should be directly exactly Seven before. Nine, what time is it? 7.09. 7.09, exactly before the, uh, the sunrise. And that we should say, They would complete the Shema together with the sunrise. Can everybody please mute on Zoom? The highest ones, they would conclude the Shema exactly with the Neitzachama, with the sunrise. So that they should be able to say Shema Nesra directly next to the Shema, next to the prayer of Geula, the redemption. And he'll daven by day, and he'll recite the Shema exactly in the time, and he'll be able to daven in the appropriate time also, which is right after the, the, sun, the sunrise. I saw that piece um, in the Kilo Zafi. I, I think what he was saying is that um, why don't we have Gula Tzvila by Mincha? He says, it's really, a, it's re- I think he's saying it's really a din in the Gula. It's not a din in the Tzvila. That's what it is. If I have to say the Gula, then I put the Tzvila next to it. But I don't have a, any Gula by Mincha. Okay. I'm going to discuss this a little bit here. Amar um, Abzeira, Micra. What's a Pasuk that shows that this is how you should do it. It says, Yeru'uchayim Shemesh. They fear you together with the sun. It means they recite the Shema as the sun is rising. And before the moon for generations. Okay. Um, Rashi says that the Pasuk here is telling me, uh, before the moon means that Mincha is recited right before sunset. Which I think Mara wasn't discussing the time from Mincha. But the Pasuk uh, that we quoted adds in that, that point. Hayyid, Rabbi Yaisi ben al I think it's Rabbi Yaisi over here, it's just an abbreviation. Rabbi Yaisi ben al Yakim, Mishim Kal Kadisha de Birshalayim. Rabbi Yaisi ben al Yakim testified in the name of the congregation of Yerushalayim. Now I see in Rabbi Nissen, Rabbi Nissen Gayan, that who's the Kal Kadisha of Yerushalayim? He says that it's Rabbi Yaisi ben Amishulam and Rabbi Shimon ben Manasya. What's another Gemara that says that? Mm-hmm. Anyone that juxtaposes, he says the the Gal Yisrael right next to the Shmanesri, so he's not damaged the whole day. Is that really so? I did it. Rabzeir is saying, and I I was damaged. I'm like my Yitzakas. What what you did? What damage did you have? The Tias Asal of Malka. That you have to bring a um, uh, hadasim, you have to bring uh, myrtle branches to the king. There was some sort of um, <coughs> um, honor that was given to Rebzeira that he could bring this, uh, what do they call, a wreath? A wreath? They would bring a wreath to the, what is it? A wreath. Wreath. With a W. T-H-W-R-E-A-T-H. Uh, uh, he would bring it to the king, and that was like a, an honor that he had, which was. Uh, Something that he didn't care much for. He says, "That's what your, uh, that's your problem. That's uh, that's what that you're saying that you're saying the tefillah and you still have to do that." So, that you should even have to pay for it to be able to see the king. You should always run to see the king, the Jewish king. And not only to the Jewish king, but even to the non-Jewish king. Jim Yizke, because if you merit Yavchen bin Malchi Yisrael, Malchi Akam, you'll be able to tell the difference. That means Mashiach will come, you'll be able to see, oh, the Jewish king is much greater. So that's something that you should pay for. That's not a damage. We talk about, um, about uh, saying the bracha, seeing the president. And then they said, what about seeing, uh, what, what if you see the president on television? What should you do? He said, turn it off. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amar Rabbi La Ula. Rabbi La said to Ula, this is interesting because I, I always, 
based on the Gemara in, in, um, in Aminiach, that Bila was, was in Eretz Yisrael. Anyway, here it seems that he's in Babel, and Ula was the one that travels back and forth. The last Gemara that we had, Reb Zera, was in Eretz Yisrael. It's Reb Zera. How do we know that? Who was talking when it said to Reb Zera? Who told Reb Zera? I'm a lake of my Yitzhak. Must be, it doesn't say who told him. I'm not sure if he's in Eretz Yisrael, then it sounds like it. Now Rabbi La says to Ula, when you go up, when you go up to there, what does it mean up to there? To Eretz Yisrael. Shal b'shlama d'rav bruna achi. B'maymet kol hachabura. Ask how my brother's doing. My brother, Rav Bruna, because the Adam Gadolhu, because he's a great man, the Samach the Mitzvahs, and he rejoices with Mitzvahs. Zim the one time Samach Gula Tfila, he, he davened, he said Gula Tfila, but like Pasuk Chucha Mipume Kuli Yoyma, and he did a smile, didn't leave his face the whole day. This is describing his brother. It's got to be a, some commentary over here. What does what uh, commentary say? Because uh, we all do that. Um, not really. Steve Eskin. What? What is that? It's a rabbi priest and the minister went up on the space shuttle. You don't check on video? No. And then, so when they all came down, they first interviewed the priest. He said, what was it like up there? He said, oh, the majesty of the heavens uh -huh. and Then they asked the priest, what was it like? He said, oh, God's throne is, you know, the world is just unbelievable. Then they asked the rabbi, what was it like? He said, oh, shakras It's a smaller question. Uh -huh. So, no, so, um, you, you get the Gemara, though, that he did it in the morning and he was happy yeah. the whole day. Okay, hey, 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 how was he able to join Gula Tzvila to say Baruch Hashem Gal Yisrael right together with um, Tzvila from Rabbi Yechanan? But Rabbi Yechanan says Betzila Why Ma Hashem Sfasei Tifta? Before the Shmuel, you have to say this verse Hashem Sfasei Tifta. The Agad Tila Saha. Automatically, you're not joining the Gula Tzvila. We had this Gemara before. Interesting. Ula Besayfu Why Ma Yula Tzvila Mifi And at the end, he says Yula Ratzin. Let it be. The uh, favor the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart. So that, okay, Amar Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar says that to hey betfilas betfilas Let that be referring to my. That means that Rabbi Yechanan that says that you say Hashem Sfasei Tifta. That's by my. But in the morning you would say right away Gal Yisrael Baruch Ata Hashem Melekin Melekin Vesev. The Gemara says one second. But Rabbi Yechanan holds you have to be same with by night as well. So how can you say Hashem Svasi Tiftach? Elam Rabbi Lazar, Tei B'Tzila Samincha. Hashem Svasi Tiftach, you only say by Mincha. Ravashi Amar, Ravashi says, I feel it came out Really, you can say Hashem Svasi Tiftach by all the Shemun Esrei's. Even the Kavur Rabbanu B'Tzila, once the rabbis established it in the prayer, B'Tzila Richtadam, it's like a long Shemun Esrei. A continuation. You have a whole bunch of brachas anyway in, in, in Shmanesh before you get to the bracha of Gula. Right. That's, well, well, that's well considered a tefila. All that's considered right. tefila. The, the bracha of Gula was referring to the Gal Yisrael right. beforehand. Yeah. I noticed uh, before I admired yeah, before Ashkivenu and in Shachris um, directly before Shmanesh. Mm -hmm. I noticed in some communities they. Um, they take the three steps back and they say Gal Yisrael while they're walking forward or, or while they're back. I noticed in Chabad they, they, um, they say Baruch Hashem Gal Yisrael and then they take the three steps back. Now, I don't know if that's if that's based on something or, or if that's uh, I have to see I have to watch the video. What's the correct way to do? I'm, I don't know the correct way. That is not a halacha shit. <laughs> there was no saying, halacha written I'm just in the saying, saying Gal Yisrael is supposed to be directly next to Shmanesri. That means you don't say anything in between. There's no answering Amen. That's that's clear. 
but the question is those three steps, when, when, do, when do they go in? So anyway, you look around, you'll see different, uh, different customs, apparently, at least that's what I noticed. Um, if you don't say that Hashem Sifasei Tiftach is a long prayer, then then how could you say Gul How can you put Gol Yisrael next to Shmanesri in the evening? You have to say the next prayer, and that's after Gol Yisrael. Rather, once the rabbis established it, it's considered a long Gula. Hashem Sifasei Tiftach is a long Tfila. We're extending it. Things on both ends. The, the, the tila got enlarged by the Hashem Sivasi Tiftach, and the gula got enlarged by Hashkivenu. That's it's a, like a private gula. Um, uh, uh, help me sleep, protect me for, uh, during the night. Okay, Hachinami. So too, given the cover of Banu Ketfila, the tefila Ketfila Rechidami. So too, Hashem Sivasi Tiftach is considered a long prayer. Um, why don't we say it by Mincha? What does it say? It says. Um, because the Ula is by night and in the morning when we came out of Egypt. So there was a redemption at night when they let us go, when we sacrificed the Kavu Pesach, and also in the morning when we actually went. But in the afternoon, there's no Ula there. So you don't say you call Yisrael by me. That's, I think that's why I read yeah, so Yeah, uh, <laughs> Mechti, let's see. Hi, Yul Ratzin in my face. Yul Ratzin means let it be the words of my mouth. Mashmal of the Saif, Mashmal of Mikara. That could be a prayer that you say before you pray. Let the words of my mouth, let the following words of my mouth be uh, my favor in front of you, God. Or it could be let the words of my mouth that I have previously said, that I have just said, could be a follow up or it could be a. a <coughs> A pilot to the prayer. What so much me car? The beina le meimar. The much me car the beina le meimar that he's going to say. My time at the knu rabban alachi yilchas brachas. Why? What's the reason that we say yulratzim after shemones? You could say yulratzim before shemones. Yulratzim means let the let it find favor the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart in front of you, Hashem. So. Say it before. Lemur Mikara Amra Bi Yehuda Breder Reb Shimon Ben Pazi Hayol for Le Yomer David and Lachy Yudchas Parshas the Pikach the Kin Rabbanan Lachy Yudchas Brachas. Now at the end of chapter nineteen in Tillam, it says Yud Ratzin Emirfi. The Gemara is saying like this because David Melch says it after eighteen prayers, after eighteen Psalms. So therefore, we say it after eighteen Brachas. Gemara Reidu asks, "Hani Yudches? It's eighteen. Yudches Avi? It's nineteen. It's after." The psalm that we say, Torah Hashem to me, it was not us. That prayer we say Shabbos morning. Two, two of them are together. Yeah. Very good. Ashrei Ha'ish v'Lamarak Shagayim Chada Parshahu. Two of them are together. The first two are together. In other words, we, we divide it in half, but it's really one. So therefore, when it, you count it out, it's nineteen. Really, traditionally, it should have been one prayer. It should have been one, which makes the total eighteen. So Yulratzin is after 18 prayers. Is Ashrei Ish or Ashrei Ish? Because I, I remember I asked you the same in Tehillim, it says Ashrei Shri Sefa, and it's a different Tehillim. It's just that first plus up. That's, that's, that's added in. That's added in. Ashrei, this is, this is, Ashrei Ish. This way Ashrei Ish is, is Kapitel Aleph, Tarek Aleph. And Lama Rakshu, um, why do the nations tremble? It's referring to the War of Kog and Magog, which we'll have to learn about a little bit. Um, that goes together. Those two, those Psalm one and Psalm two, go together. Psalm Rabbi Yehuda Breder Rabbi Shimon Pazi Kuf Gimel Parshi Psalm David is a hundred and three um, chapters that David said. Vlayamar Halaluka at Shirabe b'Mapalas and Shalosham. And he didn't say the word Halaluka until he sees the downfall of the wicked. Shenemar Yitama Chatam in Aretz Yerushalayim made in Barchin Avshe. So Shem Halaluka. That's the first Halaluka in Tehillim. It's, and he says it after 103 chapters. Where says, one second, Hani Kuf Gimel, Kuf Dalet Havim. It's not 103, it's 104. Elishma Mina, 
Asher Yishvalam Rav Shadayim Chad Parsha, he must be that the first two join together, and then then it takes the number down by one. Some Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmini, Amar Rav Yechman. Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmini says the name of Rav Yechman. Call Parsha Shahisa Chavit Al David. Every chapter that David loved, that was beloved to David, Pasach Babashe, the Siim Babashe. He started it with Ashe. He finished with Ashe. Pasach Babashe, the Siim Babashe ish. The Siim Babashe, the Siim Babashe. Talk less about it. What's happening in there? The second chapter is finished with the word Ashe. The first chapter starts with the word Ashe. It means that it's one chapter. He starts it with Ashe. He finishes it with Ashe. That means that it's, so a, it's one. It's yeah. really one. It's really one. Now the Gemara Psachim discusses that there's 147 chapters in Tilim, and um, and uh, we have to to get because we have 150. So we have to join and some others together. And the way the Mufarshim are joining it together is you're putting together one and two goes together, and then I think 117 goes together with 116. And then there's another one that's uh, that's divided uh, separately. One of the Sheremalis is divided uh, separately. Okay. So what about the the buffets um, or whatever it is that start with one thing and finishes off with a different thing? Oh, so those were not um, those were not as beloved. Now Tysus here points oh, out. Would be two. What do you mean? Uh, according to this reason, it would be two. It would be two things. Oh no! So the first chapter and the second chapter starts. The first starts with Ashrei, and the second chapter ends with Ashrei. That means that it's one, one chapter. But there are other chapters that don't have the same word at the end. Michtam Ladavid doesn't end with Michtam Ladavid. So um, that's because that wasn't the most beloved. This is it. But the only thing is, Tesis over here says. It's interesting that it happens to be that that's the only chapter that starts with Ashe and ends with Ashe. So he says it doesn't mean Ashe, Ashe. It means anything that is the same word. It says, for example, Tila Ladavid. Arimimcha, that's the beginning of Ashe. I'm saying Ashe, that's the confusing word in here. The, the Sam Tila Ladavid, that finishes off with Tila Sashem Yidabrapi. Not Bana. And then the Halalukas as well. That's what Taisa says. Yeah, very good. Hanu Briyani, they were these uh, troublemakers. David Bishavusi, the Rameya, that were in the neighborhood of Rameya, Rabbi Kamatsali, Tuva, and they were bothered with Rameya a lot. Tuva means not good, Tuva means a lot in Rameya. Rabbi Kaboy, Rameya, Rachmea, Ilavayo. Rameya prayed about them, Kiech, Dila Musa, that they should die. Amrilei. Ruria the Bisu, Ruria, Reb Meir's wife, Reb Nisim going here, adds that she's also Reb Niederman Chadri's daughter. Um, so Ruria says, my daita, what, what is your, your intention? You shouldn't accept your tamach because it says that the um, sinners should uh, should cease. Miksiv, chaitim, does it say the sinners? Chatoim ksiv, it says the sins. Va'ayid, and also, fill the list of the safe of the crowd. Look at lower, low, go down to the end of the pasuk. It means read further. Rishon my and there'll be no more wicked. Even the yitam achatam Once there's no more sin sinners, then of course there's no more wicked. Ella boy rachmel elavaya the lahadu b'tshuva. Rather, you should pray about them that they should repent. Then Rishon my then they won't be any more wicked. She learned very well. Repented. Huh? She learned very well. Days. Right. <laughs> So he davened about them, and they did tshuva. The interesting thing is that um, if you look in the commentaries on, on the Pasuk, they don't learn the Pasuk like Burya. They learn it that it means, it has to do with if there's a dogish in the test. And it says chatarim, it doesn't mean sins or sinners. And the commentaries there say that it means sinners regarding the people. So anyway, but the, it doesn't have to. Uh, Bruria learned the difference, and that's her next proof. Amalei Ahu Tzaduki the Bruria. This Tzaduki said to Bruria, "Is anyone using the um, the Steinzeltz? Yeah. Does it say Tzaduki there, or does it say? Let's look at what the what the text is, because they, he uses a like a manuscript to get the uh, 
<coughs> is it Suzuki or Amin? Yeah, we have the traditional text. Oh. We, I mean, like the printed. Mino. He says Mina. Yeah, so the Mino is usually like the early Christians. And um, I don't know about enough about the early Christians to make that more significant for me. But um, anyway, they they studied the, the Torah as well. And they uh, one of them is having this conversation with Bruria. Siv. Says in the Pasuk, Rani Akara Layalada, rejoice, barren woman that has not given birth. So he asks, Shimdula Yalada Rani, she should uh, rejoice because she hasn't given birth. Amrlay. So she says to him, Shatya, you fool. Shafila Saifa the Kra, look at the end of the Pasuk, the Ksipki Rabbin Baneshem Mebula Marashem, because it'll be more from the children of the desolate than from the married woman, says Zashem. Elamaya Kara, so what does he mean, barren, Balayalada, and hasn't given birth? Rani Knesset Yisrael, rejoice the Jewish people, Shadaim Alisha Kara, that's similar to a barren woman, Shlayal the Banim Legehenim Kavasaycha, that hasn't given birth to children that are going to Gehenim like you. She ends with a punch. Amalei Yehu Tzaduki it must be over there, Min as well. This Min, this um, heretic, said to Rabbi Vo, Ksiv, Nizmala Davim Nefnei, Bevarchem Pnei Avshalom Benayim. One pasuk, one chapter in Tilim, or up to chapter three. Uh, in Tilim, it says the psalm of David as he ran from Avsh- away from Avshalom, his son. Another ksiv, it also says, this is in Psalm Nunzayin 57, it says, al Tashkes, but it says, Ledavid, Nichtam Bevarchay Mipnei Shal Bama'ara. This is a psalm of David when he ran away from Shal. So we have one that he's running away from. Avshalom, his son. And we have a, a son who is running away from Shal. He asks, Which which story happened first? David had to run away from Shal first, or he had to run away from Avshalom first. So he says, Let's see, Maisa Shal Abibresha. Shal, he had to run away from Shal, his father in law. That's who he was running away first. Lichter Vreshis, so why doesn't it say chapter 57 before chapter 3? To some he says, um, Rabbavo, Rabbavo was common to argue with uh, these people that were challenging with Pesukim. He says, um, He's in Eretz Israel. He's in Eretz Israel, he's in actually Kasaria. I'm sorry, a lot of students. Yeah. He's considered a student of Rabbavo also. Yeah. He says, um, Atun, according to you, the Rishti Smuchim, that you don't look at the, you don't learn the Psukim the way they're juxtaposed, where they are next to one, next to each other. So, Kashalachu, that's why you have this question. But Anan, but for us, Dushinat Smuchim, we say that the position of the Pasuk teaches us something. So, it's like Kashalan, so for us it's not a problem. Dam Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan says, Smuchim in Atayraminayim. How do we know that the darshan smuchim? Shenemar smuchim lad liyolam asi memes liyosher. They're juxtaposed forever and ever. They're made with truth and and uh, just and straightness. Right. Lama nismacha. He quotes the pasuk from Tilim to explain the the pasuk of Tilim. Lama nismacha parsham shalom parshas goy gumagay. Why is chapter three of Tilim right next to chapter two, which is goy gumagay? Shem yar melachadam. What happens, Goyg and Magig? They rebel against the Prophet and they rebel against Hashem. Goyg and Magig. Magig is the, uh, the king of Goyg, right? Is that, uh, Goyg is the king of Magig. I forget what it is. So um, they, they rebel against uh, Hashem. It says, Klum Yeshevet Shemarid Barabai. Is it possible that a servant rebels against his master? Afat Amalek, Klum Yeshevet Shemarid Barabai. Is it possible for a child to rebel against his father? Elahava, Achanamahava. It's, maybe it's not logical, but it happened. So if you see that it happened by David, that his son rebels against him, so that's a proof that if you if you were saying, ah, Goygumagag is never going to happen, how could a servant rebel against his master? It says, well, how could a child rebel against his father? You see it happened, so that that's also what happens. That's why it's one is next to each other. So that's why that section is before the story of Shaul, just because we put it next to Goygumagag. 
doesn't explain the whole order of it, but it says why it's uh, why it's next to number two. It says in the name of Shem What's the meaning of the verse? Pia Pascha B'Chachma. Her mouth opens with wisdom. The Torah's Chesed Al Hashayna, and the Torah of kindness is on her tongue. This is a, a psalm in, in Mishlei, uh, a verse in Mishlei in Eishes Chayel regarding who did Shlaima say this? La Yamra Al Keneged David David. He's saying it regarding his father David. Shador B'Chami Shaylam and Vamar Shira. He lived in five worlds, and he says, Shira, how does he get to five? What is that? I know we're going to elaborate on that, but where does it come from? Pia Pascha B'chafma. I'm not sure. Dorbe Meir, we're going to go through the five positions that David was in, and each one he said, Shira. Dorbe Meir, he was in his mother's womb, Vamar Shira, and he sang a song. I don't know if you can sing in there, but he sang about it, at least. Um, or maybe he was able to. Shinemar, as it says, My soul blesses God in all my innards. Mm-hmm. It means even when he's in the womb, he was, uh, he was praising God's name. Yotzalav Yeroilam, he's born. And he looks around at the heavens, your astronaut joke, and he sees, he says, He says praises. So blessed is Hashem, the angels, the strong ones that do His will. They listen to His voice. And blessed is Hashem, all the hosts. Maybe it's talking about the five uh, ways of speaking. Five. Oh, very good. Uh, uh, that may come up shortly. I, what, I, what I was asking is, yep. it says, how do we get, five, David says, oh, he says, um, David that lived in five wor- worlds, so he also says five, five uh, songs. But how do we get that from the Pasuk, the Apostle of Hachmas, he's saying because it's five parts of speech. It's a very good job. Mishikaya. It's an imaginary truth. <laughs> It's going to come on the on the on the Zoom on the uh, no, on the uh, WhatsApp group. You're going to, you're going to see a joke today. Yainek mishade imai, mishade imai. He nurses from his mother. Binestako bedadei. He looks at her breast. Vamashir. He says praise. Shenema brachin afshir sem ba'al tishkechi kol gemula. Blesses Hashem. And I don't forget all the benefits. Michael Gemulov, this is a play on words. Gemulov means benefits, but also Gemulei Chalaf means the nurse. Amr he's praising Hashem, that Hashem created a woman, that her breasts are in a place of understanding. Time am I, what's the reason for this? Amr Abba you shouldn't have to look at an inappropriate place. If you would have to nurse from another place, that wouldn't be appropriate. But Masna Amr Abba you shouldn't be nursing from a dirty place. Now he sees the downfall of the wicked. From Ashir, he says, "Song." The passage that we said before, which is Psalm one hundred three or one hundred four, depending on which count you have, right? So he says, "Hallelujah!" After he sees that the wicked are destroyed. What does it mean? The wicked are destroyed, whether like Bruria or whether like Reb Meir's first shot. Either they did shuva or they. Uh, I think so Hashem doesn't. That's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, Benny's asking a question. Um, you're not supposed to rejoice at the downfall of your enemies. That's a good question. Very good. I don't know the answer, but uh, the question is good. They're not rejoicing that they. Maybe it's, yeah. They're rejoicing that they, they're free. Or... Yeah, it could be that there's two approaches there. What does it say? Um, someone said, told me this from Shlomo Kalbach, that he was in one yeshiva where the Rosh Hashiva used to uh, um, uh, uh, respond very quickly to the questions. He would answer the question before he even finished, before the person even finished asking. Then he changed yeshivas, went somewhere else, and uh, the Rosh Hashiva was listening to the before he asked the question. So that's a good question. He was very surprised because that wasn't the style that he was used to. So he asked him, "Why are you doing?" He says, 
look, I can give an answer, but why should I ruin a good question with an answer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then he finished off. He said, um, that's why the Manashtana, you don't really give an answer to each of them. He says, because the question is, why are we, why are we in Gullus? He says, what, I'm going to ruin that, uh, that question. The question is a much stronger question. That's the, in the Kutitera, they say that also. Every, it always starts off. Why did the Neshama come down into the body? And then it goes through. And the, the question is never really answered. I was reading this book about a little bit about this. Uh huh. Rosh Hashanah. Okay. The stack of the Amisa. Then he looks at the day of death. Bama Shira. Uh, and he says, "Song Shem Abarchin Afsis Hashem Hashem Ali Kai Gadal Tamayt Hayd Vadal Avashta." My soul blesses Hashem. Hashem, my God, very great. He says, "Glory." In his majesty, he wears majesty. My mashma dalyam misinema. How do you know that that is talking about the day of death? Amar Rabba Barav Shilam Sefer Dinyana. Because if you look further, you'll see that. It says the Ksiv. Chaste panecha. He hides his face. You hide your face. You behalon. They vanish. Chaste fruchem. Increase your breath. I guess. Igvayim. They perish. Rabsimi Barukva. Ba'amri la Marukva. Either Reb Simi Barakva or Marakva would frequent by Reb Shimon Ben Pazi. They have a Masada Agadita, Kamei the Reb Shur Ben Levi, and he was, I guess, Reb Shimon Ben Pazi would arrange the uh, teachings in front of Reb Shur Ben Levi. Amale, he asked him, "My Dixiv, what's the meaning of the verse?" Perchin Nafshi Es Hashem Chal Krov Yashim Kadshu. My soul blesses God, and all my innards, His His holy name. Amale Bore. Come and see. God is different than a human. He'll paint a, an image on the wall, or form an image on the wall. But he's not able to put in there the soul. It doesn't come alive. Um, or innards. That means functioning. But Hashem is not so. He makes another image, another form, inside a form, inside the woman. There's another baby inside. And he can put inside it the functioning organs and the soul. And that's what Rechana says, in Hashem, There's no holy like you, Hashem, and there's, there's nothing like you, and there's no rock like our God. My ain't sir, Kelly Kane. What does it mean there's no rock like our God? Ain't sire, Kelly Kane. There's no artist like Hashem. There's no sharp. Yeah? No silversmith. Can I ask a question? Yeah. I mean, all we've been discussing now for a while is all the she was the devil. Right. So why did he get in trouble for doing she on Torah? Where did that thing? Yeah, that's when he called the Torah a song. And this is all this Torah we can tell him? Yeah, I guess it was sort of like limiting it. There is a song in Cairo, but to say that all it is, look. Oh, that's See, what if you go to a, it to say this. Yeah, if you would go to a, a, a wedding or something, a big dinner, you say, oh, it's a nice appetizer. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, there's something like that, but we don't know exactly the. Okay. My came What does it mean? There's nothing like you. Amar Rabbi Yehuda Bar Menasya. Rabbi Yehuda Bar Menasya says, "I'll take your came Don't read it. There's nothing like you. Ela ein lebaloischa. There's nothing that outlasts you. Shleik midas hakadosh baruch midas pasav adam. That Hashem is not like flesh and blood, like a human. Midas pasav adam. I see the mevala my sight. It's possible for a uh, silversmith to make a cup or something that outlasts him. It lasts for hundreds of years, probably, right?" And um, it's the opposite. Hashem outlasts all his, all the, everything that he makes. <laughs> okay. He says, no, that wasn't my question. This is what I'm saying. He says, five times, corresponding to what? Did David say that? 
La Yamanel Knegada Kadish Barhu, it says corresponding to Hashem, the Knegad Nishama, and corresponding to, to the soul. Ma Kadish Barhu Malay Kalailam, Af Nishama Malay Malay is Kalagu. Just like God fills the world, so too the soul fills the body. It's funny like what the frame of reference here is. We know that God fills the world, but um we didn't know the soul fills the body. Oh, the soul fills the body also. That's what it seems like. There's another gear saying, you know, from right there. It goes with the opposite. The specific always quotes it the opposite. But just like the soul fills the body, so too Hashem fills the whole world. In, in that um, discussion about, about Simpson. Anyway. Just like Hashem sees but isn't seen. Also the soul sees but it's not seen. It sustains the world. Hashem sustains the world. Also, the soul sustains the body. Just like Hashem is pure. Also, the soul is pure. To Hira, he was saying in the morning. Just like Hashem is inside, inside. Also, the soul is inside, inside, inside her chamber and another chamber. Let the one that has these five come and praise the one that has these five. Says, what's the meaning of the passage? Who is like you that knows interpretation? That knows interpretation of the matter. Who is like Hashem that could make a uh, what's uh, how do you translate pshara? A um, a uh, um, compromise, a compromise. It's going to say mediation. A compromise. Between the two tzaddikim, between Chizkiyo and Yeshayo, between Chizkiyo Hamelach and Yeshayo Hanavi, Chizkiyo Mar Leis Yeshayo Gaboy. Chizkiyo says, "Let Yeshaya come to me." To Hachi Ashkan Beelio. That's what happened by Elio. Elio was a prophet, and Yeshay is a prophet. Who who went to who? Elio went to Achav. Does Al Gabi Achav? Shnei Ma Beelach Elio La Harzus Achav. This is after the famine. He goes after. I think it was three years. He goes to Achav. Achav says. Um, uh, you're uh, Elio, Eicher Yisrael, the the troubler, the cause the famine for Israel. So Elio went to Achav. So therefore, Yeshaya should come to me. The the prophet comes to the king. Yeshaya Amar Leisichiskio Gaboy. He says, Let the king come to me. I'm the prophet. Ashkan be Yehirim ben Achav. Dasal Gabi Elisha. When there was a battle with um, uh, Yehiram, with together with Yeshafa, and together with Edom, they they were going to battle against Mesha or whoever it was. And they said, let's go to, um, they had a trouble, they didn't have water. They said, let's go to, uh, to, uh, to Elisha. And Elisha gave a prophecy. So the king went to the prophet. So that's what Yeshayo is saying, let the king come to me. Ma'asa, HaKadosh Baruch what did Hashem do? He made Yeshayo sick. And he tells Yeshayo, Look, you're allowed to go and do Bita Chaylam. Remember, Yeshayo was, Preparing to die, the Yavi love Yeshaya ben Amitz and Avi and Yeshaya ben Amitz. The prophet comes to him. The Yemi love Kaya Mar Hashem. Says so says Hashem. Tzav lebeischa. Set your house in order. Kimei set tavli sichi because you're about to die. My kimei set tavli sichi. What does it mean? You're about to die and you won't live. Kimei set tavli lemasev leitichir leilamabai. You're gonna. He tells his girl, you're gonna die in this world. You won't live in the world to come. Amalei Michael Lehi says why? Amalei Mishum play a sack to the peri gravy because you didn't. You're not involved in procreation. You didn't have a child. Amalei, he says, I didn't have a child. I didn't get married. Because I saw with prophecy, because I'm going to have children that are not uh, appropriate. His son, he had a son, Menashe, that was, uh, uh, was very bad. Regarding the secrets of Hashem, what is that to you? That's, not, that's none of your business. You were commanded, you have to do it. At that time, I would explain Rabbi, what the art of life is. Yeah, but they attempted to. He didn't get married. <laughs> that they didn't get married? Yeah. Really? Uh, well, interesting. Madanicha, uh, come quick. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to rush this Gemara. I don't want to rush the Gemara. Let's stop it here. We'll continue tomorrow.
Two after this, he went there, and that's after this, he had no more children. He really got it. Okay. Good. Thank you. No, nope. Still going. Oh, going on. Thank you very much. Yeah, it says, oh, it says leave. No, thank you.